Welcome to my presentation on how to use photojournalism to create a powerful impact. I'm going to take you on a journey through history to show you how photos have changed history and what impact they had. You can be a spark for powerful change with the power of photojournalism too. Hi, I am Victoria Yakota, and photojournalism has been my lifelong passion and work. Photojournalism is a powerful vehicle for change that can bring global awareness. It is a universal language that, trans that transcends culture, nation, race, religion, age, and differences. You will understand photojournalism without words. It can be a direct wake-up call. Its message is immediate and impossible to dismiss. Photojournalism brings it home. It is personal, hits the heart, makes it real, sparks awareness, and brings it home locally and globally. No more secrets. Photojournalism is a potent tool of truth, awareness, justice. You can't run, you can't hide. The following photos are historic examples of how photojournalism has changed history. W. Eugene Smith, Minamata, Japan. Tomoko and mother in the bath. Severe toxic industrial waste water poisoning. This is the photo that inspired me to become a photojournalist. Chiso Corporation dumped toxic industrial wastewater into Minamata Bay in the Shiranu Sea from 1932 to 1968. Local seafood where villagers fish accumulated bioaccumulated mercury for over three decades. Even after villagers began getting Minamata disease, severe neurological and physiological damage, even in vitro, Chisu and the Japanese government did little to address it. In 1968, Chisu finally ended this practice. That same year, Japan officially recognized Chisu Minamata disease. Thousands of villagers' lives and families had already been destroyed. They sought reparations. In 1971, W. Eugene Smith and his wife, Eileen Mayoko Smith moved to Minamata and lived with their families for three years, photographed and told their stories, despite Smith being severely beaten by Chizo thugs and left blind in one eye. Impact. Villagers won their lawsuit. The corporation paid over 86 million U.S. dollars in compensation and were ordered to clean up its toxic contamination. W. Eugene Smith's powerful photos had massive worldwide impact. It is considered one of the most potent historical records of the severe consequences caused by toxic industrial wastewater. Minamata, the movie, is scheduled to be released in the U.S. on February 5, 2021, and in the U.K. on February 12, 2021. It is still having impact. Andrew Putnam Hill and the Sepervirons Club campaigns to create Sequoia National Park to protect the sequoias. Andrew P. Hill was hired to photograph the redwood and sequoia trees in 1899. When he learned that they were unprotected and huge groves were being decimated by logger fellers, Hill went on a campaign to prevent their destruction. Hill gathered a coalition of influential people for a camping trip among the giant trees of the Big Basin Redwoods. Inspired, the Semper Virens Club was formed. Their motto and work was Save the Redwoods. They pushed for California state legislation that would allow the Big Basin to be purchased for a state park. Midnight before the vote was taken, Hill walked three miles from Santa Clara to, Herald, to the Herald newspaper offices. Hill got a guarantee of $50,000 from a donor, payable to the lumber company owners, if the state did not pass the bill. Henry Wells, editor of the Herald, published a special edition that night, headlining the guarantee. At 4.30 a.m., Hill boarded the train to Sacramento and put a copy of the special edition on each legislator's desk. Impact. The bill passed unanimously. California Governor Henry T. Gage signed an appropriations bill and purchased 2,500 acres 
for $250,000 in 1901. In 1904, Big Basin Redwood State Park became the first state park in California. Ansel Adams and Sierra Club, campaign to establish Kings Canyon National Park. Ansel Adams was inspired to use photography to share the beauty of wilderness to convince people to create protected areas for generations to come. He lobbied Congress for a Kings Canyon National Park, the Sierra, Sierra Club's priority issue in the 1930s. Ansel Adams did a series of photos of the Kings Canyon in 1936 when the establishment of the park was being proposed. The Sierra Club sent him to Washington, D.C. in 1936 to lobby for a bill before Congress to create Kings Canyon National Park. Adams toted his portfolios from Senate to House and met with more than 40 members of Congress. Adams spoke at the National Park Service Conference and shared his portfolio of photos with Harold Ike's Secretary of the Interior. His photos influenced Secretary Harold Ike's and President Franklin Roosevelt to embrace the Kings Canyon Park idea. Impact. Kings Canyon National Park was created in 1940. Dorothea Lang, Migrant Mother, Pea Pickers Camp in Naipomo, California, 1938. Dorothea Lang was employed by the U.S. Government's Farm Security Administration, FSA program formed during the Great Depression. They hired her to raise awareness of and provide aid to impoverished farmers through her photography. That day of the photo, Lang drove 30 miles past the Pea Pickers Camp, then turned around and arrived at the camp. I saw and approached the hungry and desperate woman in the sparse lean-to tent, as if drawn by a magnet, Lang wrote. As the mother's weary eyes looked past the camera in resignation, Lang took her photo. I knew that I had photographed the essence of my assignment, wrote Lang. Impact. Lang returned to the next day with her photos and 20,000 pounds of food to the destitute migrant camp in Napomo, California. Dorothea Lang's photograph Migrant mother at the Pea Pickers Camp in Naipomo, California, did more than any other to bring awareness and put a face on the cost of the Great Depression. George Floyd, I Can't Breathe, by, by Darnella Frazier, age 17, cell phone 2020. Citizen photojournalism is a powerful force of change. A brave young girl, 17-year-old Darnella Frazier, stood her ground and recorded George Floyd's death with her cell phone and changed the world. In Darnella Frazier's own words from her Facebook post, I'm doing it for clout? For attention? What? To get paid? Now y'all just sound dumb and ignorant. I don't expect anyone who wasn't placed in my position to understand why and how I feel the way that I do. If it wasn't for me, four cops would still have had their job causing other problems. My video went worldwide for everyone to see and know. His family was reached too. The police most definitely would have swept it under the rug with a cover-up story. Instead of bashing me, thank me, because that could have been one of your loved ones and you would want to see the truth as well. Let photos tell the story. The impact from this image is ongoing all over the world. George Floyd and the impact of Darnella Frazier's photo spurred the Black Lives Matter protest. These photos speak for themselves. Jim Hubbard, Shooting Back, Youth Initiative Using Participant Photojournalism to Empower At-Risk Youth as a Powerful Force for Change. In 1988, Pulitzer Prize winning photojournalist Jim Hubbard started Shooting Back, a photojournalism program for homeless, homeless youth in Washington, D.C. Quotes from Jim Hubbard. 
Shooting back was the first known attempt to raise a serious social issue, in this case, homelessness, through the eyes of the subject of the news photographer, homeless children. By giving homeless children cameras, they documented their own realities. Genuine storytelling, coupled with strategic advocacy, can be a powerful way to reach those who have the power and resources to initiate and direct change. Fundamentally, why would we deprive the poor of the tools and knowledge used by the privileged to elicit attention, action, and reform? Many developing nations still do not have access to electricity, clean water, or other infrastructure that many of us take for granted. For such people, the ability to tell their own stories and craft their own images remains a powerful and sometimes transformative experience. Impacts of shooting back. Policy impact. The notoriety of shooting back resulted in my testifying at a con congregational hearing and being honored by the U.S. House of Representatives for my work with the homeless. The Congressional Quarterly published an article about the honor. The Congressional Majority Whip recruited me to take him on tours of sites housing the homeless and later retained me as a consultant to work with him on social and health issues, dispatching me to several location, locations, including his home tur turf in California. This was a rare case of participant images influencing policy or policymakers. Time Magazine spread. In 1990, while meeting in New York with Peter Howe, Life Magazine's photo editor, to negotiate the terms of the legendary publication's use of these images in a seven-page spread, he told me that Life would not have considered using the photos had they been taken by a pro. The unique fact that the children, the participants, created such revealing images of homelessness sealed the deal. New York Times spread. The New York Times also published a full page of the children's pictures on their editorial pages, where photographs are rarely printed, and later, a page of pictures by Native American children from my second shooting back project conducted on 10 Indian reservations around the United States. Major worldwide art gallery exposure. Cochrane Gallery in Washington, D.C., the Smithsonian Institute, and many other venues nationally around the world. Shooting back books. Additionally, publication of a book by the same name, along with significant media attention, promoted interest in the images and assured that they would become one of the most exposed photographic endeavors of the 1990s, including the work of professionals. Photojournalism as an environmental wake-up call. Bees and mass bee die-offs. What is happening to our bees? Why are they dying in mass? In 2018, one quiet spring day, I found hundreds, maybe thousands of bees trembling and dying, scattered throughout the floor of my ancient courtyard as I returned home to my apartment. They seemed to be in toxic shock. Nothing could be done to save them. It was heartbreaking. I was shocked when I later learned that the probable reason was heavy use of toxic pesticides. That year, 2018, my Vaucluse region in the heart of Provence, France, was dubbed the French champion of glyphosate consumption by Generations Future. Vaucluse still continues to be the department which uses the most pesticides, insecticides, and herbicides in France in 2020. Take heeds, warnings, like my brief episode as witness to a mass bee die-off, have gone unheeded. In China's Sichuan province, their overuse of toxic pesticides ultimately led to extinction of all their native and managed bee species. Now Sichuan, one of the world's top pear producers must rely on human pollinators to be their bees. They use specially designed brushes on long handles, flower by flower, to transfer pollen throughout the trees. This work would have been easily done by healthy bee colonies and other natu national, natural pollinators. It is costly in human labor, inefficient, and unsustainable. Know that it doesn't take lots of money and a professional training to become a photojournalist with impact. Photos taken by a cell phone or a simple camera can have the biggest impact. Tell your story. 
What can you do to call attention? There is a big difference between a grip and grin, a group shot and photos that capture your heart. Refine your eye. Carry your phone or a simple camera wherever you go. Be aware of the world around you. Photograph what catches your attention. Train your eye and speed of response. Be ready for that instant moment. Sometimes you only have a split second to compose and capture that the instant moment of profound impact. Be aware of everything in your frame. Composition and movement is important. Move into your subject. Explore all different angles. Eliminate anything that distracts from your message. Look at your subject's lighting. Focus and a steady hand is important. Show the world large and small. Get an overview of a large perspective, medium perspective, and close-up shots. Bring awareness and a cohesive story by telling all aspects. See and express both large and small everywhere on our beautiful blue planet. Example of the small. To be or not to be. By me in 2020. These are local bees and flowers photographed by me with a cell phone in between bicycling to the grocery store during COVID-19 lockdown with time and distance restrictions. The big picture, Earthrise, NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center's high resolution image. You are a light, you are the light. Never let anyone, any person, or any force dampen, dim, or diminish your light. Representative John Lewis, great civil rights leader, 2017 memoir, Across That Bridge. Yes, you can. Be good trouble for our Earth for generations to come, empowered by a cell phone or simple camera with the power and universal language of photojournalism. I did it. You can do it, too. I never had formal training. I started at 19 years old with a basic photography class and an old secondhand camera with a screw on lens. I learned on my feet and took that camera everywhere I went. I got jobs transporting cars across the country, taking pictures of whatever inspired me. My por portfolio got me a job at a small startup newspaper in New York City. They saw my portfolio and hired me as a lab tech. Then I got my big break. A blackout hit New York City. All the photographers had already left. And they threw me a camera bag and told me to cover the blackout. My photo won the prestigious Newspaper Gills Page One Award for the best news photo of the year. The rest is history. My work has taken me around the world to North Korea, South Africa apartheid, Angola war camp, Brazil's Amazon River and vast Pentanol wilderness, and more. I have won awards from, a, from the White House News Photographers Association, the National Press Photo Photographers Association, the Society of Silurians, and the Society of Photographic Educators, and more. If I can do it, you can do it too. Thank you.